Hey guys, as you might know, a couple days ago I had a launch video for 7.2 uh, version of the case sorter. And in that video I talked about the full build kits. Well, here I am, it's Saturday, and uh, I'm out here building more of these full kits. I could not have anticipated how much demand there would be for these kits. And uh, I'm overwhelmed. Actually, it's it's been awesome to see how many people wanted the full build kits. I've been shipping them all over the world. And I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about why you see them on back order already or why, the, why they're out of stock. When I decided to do the build kits, I bought 100 boards and I figured about 50 of those would be the full build kit and the other 50 I would use for what we're calling the essentials kit. The stuff that only I make, it's a small kit. And uh, so when I decided to do these kits, I decided that probably about 50 build kits would be a good starting point. I could gauge the demand based on that. Um, this was before all the tariffs and everything else. And so um, I pre-built about 30 of those kits before I did the launch video. And those are the ones that sold pretty much in just a few days. So now I'm working on the, the other 20. And I realized that I underbought one of the critical components. You could probably guess what's missing. Well, it looks like it would be the board. It's actually the heat sink that goes on the board. So I special ordered those. Hopefully I should get those today or tomorrow and I can finish up these last 20 build kits. Um, at, at that point, I'm gonna be out of motors and the motors take a long time to come from China. So uh, I do have another set of motors on order for another 50 kits. So I'm hoping in the next month, month and a half, that I'll have you know another supply coming in that I can start building these kits. But I wanted to also just take a minute and show you what goes into building these kits. And so I took a bunch of footage um, today and, and over the week of just all the elements that are involved in putting together the kit. So it's not like I get these pre-made and I just have to ship them to you. I spend a lot of my own time putting these things together. So let's take a look at that. So this footage here is how I test each and every board. So I put together this quick harness that uses spring wire and um, a lot of tape and solder. Apparently you can't solder to spring wire. So um, anyway, this is the best I could do, but it's quick to connect to these connectors and pops out real easy. This allows me to uh, push the latest firmware to the board, which is what I'm doing here. And then once the firmware is done, I can kick off a test. Now while this test is running, I'll go ahead and take that time to put on the heat sinks. And so you can see this is connected to the test harness up in the top corner there. And it, this just tells me that all the motors and all the sensors are working. And I do this for every board I ship. Next, I want to run the software and load the camera so I can adjust or calibrate the onboard resistor. And so you see here that I'm just kind of turning it up just to find the middle. The software is set to 128, which is the middle point for the software settings. Now, once that's done, I'll go ahead and switch the board off and unplug the harness and we'll do the next board. Now here I'm processing and testing all the optical sensors that come from the factory. So they come in a big batch. When you order them in bulk, uh, you have to go and separate them all. And I built this little test harness that I can quickly test each one. And you'll see on the breakout board in the top corner, there is an LED light. And when you connect, the LED light will sh shine green when it's actually receiving a signal. And so I basically plug each one of these in and interrupt it and make sure it's working properly. Now, unfortunately, I found probably about one out of 15 or one out of 20 of the sensors that I get in these batches actually don't work. And so in this batch of, I think, 30 or 40, I only found one, which is pretty good. But it would suck if you received two of the sensors in your kit and one of them didn't work. And so I kind of want to eliminate that headache. So here is uh, testing the proximity sensors. And again, I created this little harness that uses a hot glue and uh, <laughs> some heat set inserts. 
and I basically go and plug in each and every proximity sensor and then test it, make sure that it's lighting up the green light in the corner. This can be, this one is a little bit more time consuming, but um, so far I've only found out of the batch of 100 proximity sensors, I think I've only found one or two that were bad. I didn't film myself uh, building cameras, but you can always watch the uh, build series on building the camera and what's involved with each camera. So this picture is just uh, some of the cameras that I've already pre-built and ready for those kits. It's probably the most time consuming of the steps. And here I'm building the proximity sensor for the classifier base. Um, once you have to build a bunch of these, you can kind of understand why the design doesn't involve using screws. These go pretty fast as well, but I again test each one after I've assembled it just to make sure everything is working when you get it. So this is another tedious part of the build. Uh, there's a parts kit that comes in the full kit, and although I did my best to make sure we had all the parts you know, packed from China, I found out I needed to augment these kits and add a few screws here and there. And so I have to basically disassemble each one of these kits to find the, the screws that we need to augment. And then we'll go ahead and add those screws to the kit, as well as the other parts that didn't get added, mainly because I had forgotten about them. So here I am adding the individual uh, additions to each bag. So for instance, I needed two more wing nuts, a couple more of the M3 screws, and so on. If only a uh, real life could be sped up like this though. And now these are the parts that I either forgot to have added or um, decided to do later. So the nuts I couldn't have added in China because I'm the only one who holds those at those point. Um, the jumpers I didn't think about, but the electronics board has some jumpers on it. And then I decided to add a few extra screws for the fans and some springs and some other things like that. So here I am adding all the additional stuff to the parts kit. So if I do this again, they'll come from China with all these parts direct. Uh, I also forgot to do the bearings in the original kits. And this is my punishment for forgetfulness, I guess. Now finally, I get to put all the bags of parts back into the parts kits. And then I have what I call fully augmented kits that are ready to go. I'm using one of the older CS7-2 uh, boards, version 1, to test the motor. And I wrote some special software so we don't burn out the motor um, while plugging and unplugging. But I basically plug in each, in mo each motor and test that it can move in both directions. So I test each and every motor here. Out of the 100 motors that I had ordered, I have yet to get a bad one. So maybe I don't need to do this testing. Maybe they're already doing it at the factory. Now finally, the most rewarding part of the process is to put it all together. These motors have a bit of grime, so I wipe them off and go ahead and pack everything as neatly as possible. Now I had these foam inserts made custom for this project, of course. Um, it just makes packing the kit way easier than trying to individually wrap everything. So once everything is in place, it's ready to go in a box and ship to you. So hopefully you found that interesting and uh, you can see how much effort it takes to put together these kits. And I think some element of that is that, you know, my name is on this. And so I want to make sure that you get something that's going to work for you the first time and you don't have to deal with dead stuff. Um, DOA stuff is one of my big pet peeves when you order something and it comes in the mail and it doesn't work. So. I wanted to try to eliminate that as much as I can. Um, and, and so that adds a little bit of extra time to put these kits together. So as the stuff comes in, you know, give me a little grace as I, as I get stuff together. But sometimes I'll be adding two or three a day into the store. Sometimes it might be 10, but it does take a good amount of time to put these together. So um, hopefully you can appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. I love you guys. Cheers.